everybody, it's Alicia here with Steven. Say hello, Steven. Hello, Steven. Okay, anyways, uh, he always has to ruin my videos. Um, this is the better. video that I wanted to do um, a little bit earlier, but we always wait till the kids go to bed because if anybody out there has ever been A, around a five and a three year old at the same time, or B, has dealt with a five and a three year old at the same time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the belt that is the thinner belt. And um, I wanted to do a comparison with the traditional belt that you get from the featherweight shop. So this is already on here. And then when we take this belt off and, and do the switch off, I'll hold this up so you can see. Um, there is a significant difference. I always hated putting new belts on the featherweights when we do restoration or when we're doing a machine to sell because it puts a little drag. If you want, go ahead, you can go ahead and chime in there. It puts drag on the actual motor itself. Because the belt is so thick, it adds extra tension on the shaft, which usually slows down the motor. And until you run that new belt for a number of hours, it puts drag on the motor. And once, once you run it for a while, it wears in. And usually you have to readjust the motor to get the proper tension again. So I'm glad and hoping that we have found an actual belt that will do uh, the difference. So this belt has actually been on my machine for a little while. This is actually Clickety My 1939 Featherweight. And I went ahead and um, figured I would just kind of sew with him so you can just kind of C, and then we're going to sew again with him using the thinner belt. Again, I don't have, they don't have any more, um, of course I don't have my seam guide on here. Whoops. So this is going to be a guesstimate of a quarter inch. Um, they don't have, or I don't have any more of those particular belts. So this is me, I'm going over pins, so I want to be somewhat careful. And as you can see with the thicker belt right here and here, it rubs these portion of the motor. So our hopes are that the thinner belt, without having a lot of tension on the motor, will not contact those portions as much because that also will slow down the motor and reduce the speed of your sewing machine. So I guess what we'll do is now we can switch out um, for this particular belt and I can, you can actually walk them through this while you're doing it. Do you want to switch spots really fast? You come over here and I will move the camera. Whoop. So sometimes when you remove the belt, you have to be careful with these little buggers, the little washers, because they have a very specific way that they go on there. So this again is the thicker belt. Um, you can just kind of tell here. Let's hold this up here really quick. You can just see the overall difference in just thickness, even on the underside, like even. It's on the side. Yeah. So there's a huge, significant um, difference when it comes to the two. And even when we're putting this thinner belt on clickety, um, we're going to have to do some adjustments probably to the motor again. Do you want me to unthread him so that way you don't take no. off? So that's what, I, that's what I was talking about with the um, washer being on there, a very specific way. If it's not on there, it won't engage correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out the string here. So that way when it's you press on it, it won't fog down. And usually when setting for the thicker belts, we set the motor all the way at its highest position, and sometimes it's still too tight, but there's nothing else we can do. You just have to wait it out. So with this, stretches. with the thinner belt, we set it more mid to lower position. Hopefully that'll work and not drag too much. That's the bobbin thread, oops.
feel like this particular belt is going to give um, the motor a break, basically, while it's you know still wearing it in there. If you've ever seen some of the original belts on the featherweights or just the older belts in general, um, they are actually thinner in nature. Uh, these aftermarket belts here have always been way thicker than the belts that... And as you can see, when this is running, the belt is not actually contacting these two points. Which it was with the thicker belt. With the thicker belt, it springs out wider so it adds extra drag on the motor and slows it down. So we don't even, I don't even have to really sew to show the difference in the speed of that because just I don't think so. turning him over, you can see. So the thicker belts, I think, are like $9, $8.95, The thinner belts are around $11, um, especially once you factor in shipping costs. But um, I feel like they're going to be a better choice for the featherweight just because it's not going to be putting a bunch of wear and tear on the actual motor itself, which is nice, um, especially since these are antique machines and we really want to kind of keep them running as smoothly as possible. What's your take on the difference? I like the thinner belt, the fact that it doesn't rub here. We occasionally have issues with machines we service because the speeds seem slower than normal when we switch out the belts. And a lot of that has to do with this being a thicker belt, it doesn't want to conform to that small radius. So to get it to conform, we usually either have to put a lot of tension on it, meaning we set the motor down, the tension adds extra drag on the, the shaft, which doesn't mean the motor's bad, just means there's more drag than it was designed to handle. And if we get it light enough to where there isn't a lot of tension on it, the belt adds extra tension itself on these two points when it contacts. So until it's really worn in, and some people we've had contact us a week later saying the, the the shaft is spinning and basically that means they've, they've worn in their belt and they need to readjust the motor. Or they've worn in it in some it, because it's... Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll have to adjust two or three times until it finally relaxes to its optimal state. So everybody, um, I believe here at Featherweight 38, yeah, it'll be a bit of a, well, not really a huge bit, a $2 increase in price, but we're going to switch to the thinner belt just for the sheer fact that I believe, and I think Steven will agree with me on this, in the overall health of your featherweight, it's going to be the better choice. Um, if you already have a thicker belt on your machine, don't freak out and feel like, oh my gosh, I have to go and buy a new belt right here and now. You don't need to do that. There is nothing wrong with the older belt, but given the option, I would use the thinner one. Exactly. It, so. it more mimics the original belts. Again, there's nothing wrong with the thicker belt. It, it still works fine and it will work. It's just... It's going to take some time to, to wear in mm -hmm. and... That from this point going forward, um, my goal at Featherweight 38, apart from keeping everything as original as possible, is keeping everything original as possible. And with that, it's going to be using items that are not going to create a bunch of wear and tear on the machine. So if you already have a thick belt on your machine, do not freak out. Chances are it is already broken and the worst is over. Um, but just futuristically speaking, just something to kind of think about. Um, at the end of the day, it is your machine and it is your choice. But I just um, wanted to do this review to kind of show what we were thinking and, and some of the stuff that we've come in contact with, some of the issues we've come in contact with, um, and give you guys some options and some information. So feel free to contact me, either private messaging or um, commenting below if you have any questions or concerns um, about this particular video, um, I would be more than happy to answer that for you. So have a wonderful and great evening, everybody, and thanks so much for choosing Featherweight 38.